plastic plastic yes it's good but this area too we, we should not lose focus there if you are unable to collect the waste the textile waste and it taken by runoff water you know we are in the tropics a lot of rainfall it accompanies the plastics into the ocean but it is the plastics that are washed ashore because of its weight, the light weight. But the textile, like the pants and other stuff, gets stuck permanently on the ocean floor, the ocean bed. And studies have shown that we have a lot of more of such things on the ocean bed. And with time, we will never know what will happen. And this is what is leading to you know uh, there are cycles that the ocean goes through and we call it, it upwelling once we keep a lot of this uh, textile waste being deposited there once there's upwelling and then the ocean turns all these things will come up and there will be serious challenge that will be posed to aquatic life and that is an area a lot of people are not no one's talking about nobody is talking about but there is a lot more of these things that are washed by runoff water and get deposited on the ocean bed. We believe it. We've seen it. For yeah. us, even when we did the beach cleanup, we pulled 600 garments out of the water, but it would take, it took two people to pull out a t-shirt. Exactly. Because it's so full of sand and it has absorbed all these toxins and it absorbs exactly. the sewer water and all that stuff. And it's very, it's so, not good. Uh, I'm engineer Solomon Noy. I'm the director for waste management department of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly and a sanitary engineer by profession. The whole of Accra generates over 3,000 metric tons of municipal solid waste every single day. So if you can picture our situation like I was explaining in the form of a conveyor belt in a factory, this is how huge every day 3,000 tons of waste is passing. So along the value chain, if there is any hitch where there is a trip and then you stop the conveyor belt from moving, then there will be an accumulation of excess waste. And within a day, if waste is not collected within Accra, you see as if the whole city is engulfed in folk, which is not so. And our current challenge is the issue of final disposal, which is the landfills, which are getting choked every day because we have no control, like I said from the beginning, over what is coming through the ports of entry by way of youth clothes, youth footwear, and a lot of stuff that comes. The issue is that of late, the way the importers, whenever they, they uh, get uh, hold of their products, their containers from the Tema Harbor for used clothing, secondhand used clothing, they, they are complaining that about 40% of the container loads is mostly chaff. That is, if you take every five container, two of the containers will be made up of stuff that cannot, is completely chaff. You cannot salvage any material from it that you can even sell. So at the end of the day, they end up spreading those items, removing them from those they are going to sell. And on a daily basis, it becomes a burden for the city authorities for us to go and transport them onto the landfill. And we don't have any control over whatever they are importing. So from time to time, if you are able, if we say we rely on our uh, waste generation indicators, that is we know our per capita waste generation is around 0 0.72 kilogram per person per day. But then um, we do not fact, we don't have control over what is coming to Katamantu on a daily basis and that throws the calculations that we do if you should take only our population into consideration to do your generation projections it will throw it overboard and that is the challenges we are facing now the problem that this pose 
the used clothing uh, waste that they pose to us is in two folds. One is on the transportation side. Technically, once you carry these used clothes, normally we use the type of trucks we call refuse compactor trucks. Now, the used clothes, if you use the, this type of specialized vehicles, the used clothes will get entangled in the pneumatic hydraulic system, the compactor plate, everything will get entangled by the clothes. So within no time, you see, you get the whole uh, mechanism of that particular track destroyed. So you are compelled to use huge steeper tracks like this trailer you are seeing, which we, who cannot do, the compassion ratio of a trailer track is very, very low. And so instead of packing a lot of uh, waste into a compactor track, you end up packing loose weights onto these uh, uh, trailer tracks. And the resultant effect is that we will be traveling high distances and taking less, less volume. So we will end up spending too much fuel instead of taking the thing once. We will end up carrying it three times within a day. And that is impacting hugely on our budget in terms of waste management. Then another technical challenge is at the landfill. They are the contributing factor to which our landfills are getting choked. And this is the, how it goes. In our waste composition, in our, the analysis that we run, we have a large quantity of our waste being organic. And our, close to about 60% of our waste is organic. At the same time, there is very high moisture content. And that is also over 50% of moisture that is water in the waste already. In addition to that, we have very high silt. Because our, uh, we are not uh, unlike the Western world where everywhere is paved with tiles or with uh, asphalt or here it's not like that. So our um, uh, we, women, the market folks end up sweeping and gather a lot of sand with the waste and they end up putting this into the beans. So at the landfills, you have high leachate, uh, high leachate accumulation, high silt content, and then high moisture content. And as a result, when the youth clothes also go to add to it, the clothes, those that are made of cotton, will absorb the leachate, the water from the uh, landfill, and then this all compounds into what we call a higher bulk density. Now, the normal municipal solid waste that we have, before maybe you take it to the landfill, has a, high, a, a bulk density of around 320 kilograms per cubic meter. But once it gets into the landfill, because of all these complexities that I'm explaining, while the clothes will soak the water and re get it retained, it will be mixed with silt, it will be mixed with organics. In that case, it will increase the bulk density of the waste at the landfills to over 1,000 or even 2,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And this is what happens. Once you get that high amount of bulk density, it means you must increase your compassion uh, rates. The rate at which the big bulldozer and the compassion bulldozer should go over in oscillations to be able to get the uh, waste compacted on the landfill. You don't get it that way. Let alone, there is no fuel to be able to be going that much. So uh, the, the operator ends up giving up. There is no compassion being done. And then the waste gets built up high, 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 high. As we speak, the landfill got to over 30 meters high within a short time, less than uh, three years. So instead of the lifespan, which will end uh, last to about 20 or so years, just after three years of commissioning, it got full because of this process. There is no much compassion that is being done. High bulk density, making the compassion very difficult, and then high buildup of waste. And then there was accumulation of leachates. So now there was leachate buildup, within the waste on the landfill, and then the methane gas, because there is anaerobic condition setting in at the bottom. 
So there was methane gas also building up. And the leachate was sitting on top of the methane gas. So with time, once the waste that goes to the landfill, it contains ash. You know, when our market falls, the they roast corn by the roadside, they sell plantain, roasted plantain by the roadside. When they finish, at the end of the day, they sweep their uh, uh, environment and that contains ash. And it, has, it comes with uh, packets of fire. So once the fire is in the ash and you take it to the landfill, with this methane gas build up on the landfill, that is what ended up catching uh, for the landfill to catch fire and there was explosion. And as we speak, the fire has entered into a state of pyrolysis. So it is burning with little supply or even no supply of oxygen. So until all the gas is exhausted, the fire will keep burning. As far, it, it, the fire started over three months or four months ago, but it's still burning. And we have to abandon that site. And as a result, we, are, we have to travel over 100 kilometers round trip uh, and uh, with heavy traffic to be able to uh, dump our waste outside the greater Accra region. And this is a very serious challenge that is being posed to us. That is what is the effect we are getting from the textile waste that is coming from Kataman. In as much as we don't have control over this used clothes. I would want us to be circumspect if we can uh, tighten our laws so that we adhere to strict standards <coughs> so that we should beyond a certain minimum standard uh, the quality of the textile should be rejected so that uh, we don't have that uh, we are a middle income country we don't have the needed infrastructure to be able to take care of such waste. It should have gone through some form of treatment by way of waste incineration. Then we take the bottom ash to the landfill. And that way we will not have problems with uh, easy accumulation and uh, municipal solid waste buildup. But since the European countries and the Western countries have that technology and that infrastructure, whenever the used clothing degrades to a certain minimum standard, they shouldn't, not, they shouldn't uh, what do we call, export them to us. They should take care of them with their uh, higher level of uh, infrastructure that they, they, they have. And then we can maintain the market all right, but with some standards, so that at least at the end of the day, it will relieve us of the landfill, because there is no more land that people, you know, the land is vested in individuals and families. So it becomes very difficult for the families to release the land to government only to be used for the purpose of dumping waste as landfilling. And with time, we need to get enough uh, investment to be able to get some form of treatment to our waste before landfilling and not to be landfilling raw waste as we are doing currently. Exactly, we have what we call a standard producer responsibility. So right from the manufacturer, I think there should be some percentage of uh, uh, cost that should be slapped on the product. So that wherever the final destination of that product should be, the government should be able to track and then get these monies uh, released for the disposal of such items. I know I was in Japan, they have what we call uh, ELV, that is uh, end of life vehicles. Once they manufacture a vehicle, there is a cost that goes to it for the disposal. And once the lifespan of the vehicle ends, Wherever it goes, there is a company that will assess that money and then take care of the disposal of the, 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 the car. And I think that is what we should use or we should apply, a standard producer responsibility on all these products so that it will relieve, because it's like we are the receiving end and we, 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 we have become a dumping ground 
and we, we, it is eating too much into our budget, municipal budget, by way of taking care of such waste. The issue is once you landfill the textiles, though the cotton will be made of uh, <laughs> organic product, but when you break the, 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 the very fabric of cotton into its components, you will be getting hard cellulose and lignin. These are uh, components that will take years to decompose. So it sits in the landfill for 100 years, 200 years without decompo decomposing. And that is the buildup that we get. So had it not been that we have very high organic content that is mixed with our waste so that even when we cap, it can support vegetation and support some form of agricultural or recreational grounds. It would have been turning all lands that we will be using for landfilling to complete waste. Yeah, so that is what I can say. It is not helping the environment much because even if we landfill, we generate methane. And methane is a greenhouse gas. And then the global warming potential of methane is also quite high compared to carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So for the environment, a lot is being done adversely, negatively. And I think the earlier we look for solutions to address them, the better it will be for us. If you ever been to the landfill and you see them work, you will see them using some rods to be <coughs> scavenging into. Once there is textile, it means the textile will get entangled in maybe a piece of polythene or rubber that they are looking for or some piece of metal that they are looking for. And they have to scoop, 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 scoop. Whereas if the textile waste was not that much, it, was, it would have been easier for them to salvage whatever material. And all over the world, we use this informal sector. They are an integral part of waste management. You go to Brazil, you go to Argentina, also, they are them. They are a huge industry on their own. Yes, but the, the, the nature of the textile waste is making it very, very difficult for them to, to, to apply their trade. Yeah, what I want, perhaps they do not know once you are in your apartment and you give off your youth clothing, you may think it's going for charity work or it's going, but some of them are beyond use. You cannot use them for any other thing. And then the businessmen, the middlemen over there who team up with our colleagues, they package these things and bring them to us instead of taking them to the waste incineration sites for them to be properly uh, dealt with. So maybe this is a way of telling them that they should be mindful of whatever they give off as, as waste. It, those that they must ensure that should go to the municipal authorities for proper management should go. So that uh, for we, don't, we do not have problem with you, uh, uh, old clothing that is too, kept too long in the shop that needs to be discarded. That one, somebody will find it uh, necessary to use, but not the ones that are beyond. They are complete chaff, you see. Very, you can see, if you can't sell it for any, even for free, nobody wants it. And it ends up on our streets, and every day we will have to be dealing with them. So we we'll plead. I also, if the investors are interested, they can come around and then help us to put up these uh, incineration plants, py uh, pyrolysis plants, thermolysis plants, whatever, to be able to divert a, little, uh, a lot more of such waste from going onto the landfills. That will do us a lot of good.